Um, hi, my name is Tavi Gotka, uh, deputy, deputy, deputy something uh, in Estonia. Uh, the other title is government CIO. Um, I come from private sector. I actually was an entrepreneur. I built up, well, I was part of the team who built up and the largest software development company in our region. And I was the CEO of that company for seven years. And uh, by education and by profession, I'm a software engineer. So uh, if anybody has some specific questions about these things I'm talking about today, we can discuss it afterwards. Um, yeah, why I'm working for the government, there's a simple reason. I mean, uh, when I sold my shares in the company uh, in Estonia, you get this um, non-competition clause. So you actually cannot compete in, in private sector, sector for many years. So uh, my government actually noticed that and in invited me to, to become government CIO. And it was quite a remarkable challenge. And, and I have to say it, was, it has been a very interesting time uh, working for the Estonian government. Um, of course, luckily, I, when I sold my shares, I actually earned enough money so I actually can afford working for the government. But yeah, here, I'm, here I am. Um, I have a personal connection with Luxembourg because part of my wealth is here. And um, it's quite impossible to deal with the money here in this country because uh, if you want to move your money, you actually have to fax uh, them the, the order that please, this amount, please fax it to that, to that account. Not fax, but transfer it to that account. I cannot fax, I can actually, I don't know how, you, how, 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 it, how it works. So I actually do a picture with the iPhone and then I send the picture to them. So uh, that's my solution. But my topic today is um, countries without borders. The thing is that, um, um <coughs> all right, that's not that presentation, but it's okay. Uh, the thing is that uh, all the governments and companies, um, they talk about that let's go paperless, let's go totally digital, let's create the digital government, let's, take it, let's, let's get rid of all, all, all the paperwork what we have. And uh, nobody thinks what actually happens after that. I mean, like, if you're, if you're actually there, if you have a paperless government, what's then? What are the new challenges that, that the government's actually facing when you have, like, a paperless situation? For example, in Estonia, we are at the point where, for example, um, we have a land registry. That's a registry where all the property is registered. I mean, like, who owns what plots? who owns what department, who owns what uh, house. Um, and this is totally digital. So it means even if you have a paper copy that proves that you own that department, in court, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, uh, having a paper copy, it's just so old last century. I mean, like, if we go to the court and say that this is my, my property, the court says, no, we have a different information in this registry, and by law, we believe what's in the registry, so so if everything is digital, imagine if something happens with that registry. Imagine somebody uh, deletes it, spoils it. We are facing basically, in Estonia, we are facing a new land reform. So you might have like had a manor or something. Now we say, you actually, no, zero. There's no information about this anymore. So. Um, the governments will have completely new challenges. How to actually achieve the digital continuity. I mean, like, even though if there is a cyber attack or cyber war, or, or, or if there is a physical attack, like in Estonia, we have a quite aggressive neighbor. Uh, I don't want to say their names, but yeah, they are quite aggressive. So there is a chance that, that events that actually have happened in our history in the years 1939 and 1940, this might happen again. So we might have a problem that we don't have a control over our data centers anymore, so we don't have a control over registers anymore. And for example, after 50 years, when we will sing ourselves free again, how are we going to prove that, that I actually own that house or, or land before all these bad things happened? 
So in 1991, when Estonia actually broke apart from the Soviet Union, it was quite easy. I mean, like, uh, to prove that you actually can get the Estonian citizenship, you actually had to show that your grandmother was Estonian. Uh, we still had old church books available, so it was quite easy to show that not my grandmother is registered here in this church book. I'm speaking Estonian, so please give me the citizenship. And, as, uh, and the property uh, who had a paper copy before the Second World War, who could show this paper copy, they got their land back or their, their houses back. Quite easy. But what happens now if everything is digital, if everything is paperless? It's interesting that, at least in Estonia, we're dealing with the risk, as in Estonia we have, everything is digital already. We have used i-voting, I mean, like, we can vote over the internet at, at home already, like, nine years. So, and 30% and, uh, of our voters actually use it. So, um, or, or, like, other systems. People are actively using digital signature or other, st other tools or infrastructure what government provides. But, and they are so dependent, for example, I don't have a pin calculator or, or bank codes anymore. So, for example, if the government provided digital signature infrastructure will fall, I'm not able to get into the e-bank anymore, and I'm not able to actually transfer my money or actually run my money. So that's bad. So if you have all these registries digitalized, and you have an aggressive neighbor who can do cyber attacks, we had cyber war with in 2007, for example, and actually can affect your everyday life, your everyday business, you still have to think about how to protect yourself. And you see that you actually need to take the data away from your country. You store it abroad, I mean, like in, in some other countries. Um, Estonian government uses clouds a lot. I mean, like, uh, for example, our visitestonia.com tourism portal, uh, we put it into the Amazon cloud already in 2009. So, but the thing what we actually think about is that we move more and more the government data and the government services into the cloud. Just because there is a risk that if we keep everything inside Estonia territory, we might not be able to deal with the risk. That's the chance. So, <coughs> obviously, uh, the world has changed. So we know that um, these clouds, that um, the infrastructure that we can use outside, uh, these, um, these clouds are actually leaking. Or well, they might leak. You never know. So 90% of data, it's OK. Because if you think about government data, then the delegated data is less than 10%. I mean, like, uh, for example, if somebody could get the Estonian land registry, I know, please. It's public data anyway. I can actually query, like, who owns that plot. So, please. I mean, like, there's nothing to hide. I mean, like, it's public data anyway. Just take it. For us, it's important that you actually couldn't spoil it or delete it. But if you want to look at it, please. It's open data anyway. But there are some delicate data. For example, things about your military or uh, some... Uh, our digital signature uh, infrastructure. So we need to create totally under Estonian control uh, services for that. And the thing we have discovered is that we need new type of embassies. So if you think about embassy, you think about like embassy, like a building with ambassador and all that stuff. These buildings are not okay because they are not built for data. They are built for people. So for data, you need double uh, internet connection, double electricity, special cooling. Uh <coughs> so uh, yeah, different, different, different types of things. And you actually have to have a control over the network, etc., and the internet connections. So uh, it seems that governments actually need more special designed data, or we have to actually establish embassies inside other country government cloud. So basically, if you think about there's a UK government, 
there is a data center that UK government uses, and in that data center there is a five meters, multiple five meters square marked with yellow color, and uh, inside that square there are computers that belong to Estonian government, and inside that yellow square it's like Estonian soil, so Estonian law is applicable. So nobody cannot enter there without Estonian permission. And that's our embassy. And if you think about, like, if you have like this kind of um, network of, 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 of embassies, you can actually guarantee digital continuity. And what is a good point, you, as you have different needs for different type of data, you actually can use uh, physical embassies and virtual embassies. I mean, like, physical embassies, they, the yellow box I just said, like, that, that in inside UK's government cloud, there is a square, and inside that square there is a physical hardware that belongs to the student government. Or you can use a, a virtual embassy. We actually agree somehow with Amazon or, or with Microsoft or Google that, that these kind of resources are dedicated to a student government. In certain uh, like situation or crisis, we will act this or that way. So that can be actually agreed. And for us, it gives ability to put everything that we have into the cloud. So that was the idea how we deal with the risk. And we deal with this risk uh, quite heavily, especially when the Crimea event started, because uh, we understood that uh, the events what happened in 1939 in, in, in Estonia might actually happen again. So we actually have experienced that. My grandfather was sent to Siberia, so these things might happen again, even though we are the members of NATO, etc. So, like, very practical point of view, if you live in that part of the world, you still, like, there's a risk in your head. Different countries have different risk. I actually cannot understand the big brother uh, problem in Germany, so sorry about that. We have a different opinion. Like, our people doesn't see this as a problem, this opportunity. But yes, if you have an embassy on this, this kind of network, and if you keep, if everything is digitalized, you can start figuring out that you actually, I mean, like if you, you define a country, what you actually need. You need people, right? Um, just if you can search from the Wikipedia, like, well, how to define a country. We need people. Uh, a couple of these definitions actually say that they, you need territory, okay, that we can argue. Uh, people can uh, have to be able to vote, okay, we have i-voting. Uh, people have to be governed, okay, we have uh, uh, e-parliament, e-cabinet tools, that means that parliament members and cabinet members, they actually cannot work, they can work location independent. Our court system, they can, can, they can work location independent, e-taxation uh, location independent. Uh, police, okay, can get, that can be outsourced. So basically, if you think about that everything is digitalized and actually works, you can basically separate country from his territory. It doesn't actually matter who governs your country. This can also be outsourced. The neighbor actually would like to <laughs> do that for us, but uh <coughs> Yeah, let's hope that that doesn't happen. But uh, you actually can separate country from territory. I mean, like, we have a bunch of s people living in Silicon Valley, uh, or Estonians. They all voted uh, in European Parliament elections. Because in the Estonian case, you can vote over the internet. So they just open up in the computer at their home in Palo Alto and just vote it. So you can be an Estonian citizen without actually living in Estonia. So w where it takes us is that um, the question. Estonia is a small country, like Luxembourg. Uh, People-wise, a little bigger. We have 1.3 million Estonians at the moment, but still not too many. To increase the citizen wealth and the country's wealth, you actually, like a company, you have to increase the revenue. If you have more revenue, there's more chance to make a profit, etc. So you need more revenue. To get more revenue, you need more customers. So basically, you need more citizens. Um, from 1.3 to get the million, 10 million uh, is quite quite a radical idea. Um, 
first of all, our government approached these beautiful Estonian women and asked, is this goal is achievable in an uh, organic way? So we basically uh, start to heavily this old type of stuff. These are actually my kids. So, uh, but uh, simple calculations showed that by 2025, 10 million uh, in organic way is not achievable. Okay. Is there another chance? So, if we can put government into cloud already, we have all this service actually working, and uh, the government country actually provides uh, secure digital identity. Why not if we start giving out this digital identity for non-resident people, basically to all of you? I mean, like um, you get the Estonian e-identity, you use it like um, you have two ways: you have a card or you have mobile ID. Both ways you can use it, and uh, be part of Estonia. You connect yourself with Estonia. I mean, like. Uh, uh, of course, you ask me, like, why should I connect with your, with Estonia? Yeah, the same thing, like, why is my money in Luxembourg or part of it? There's always certain benefits you get, like, if, if you connect yourself with certain countries. I mean, like, everybody has different needs, and, 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 and I had a need to bring part of my money here, uh, but you might have a need to actually, for example, run a hassle-free company. I mean, like in Estonia, you can actually create a company with 18 minutes over the internet. You can open up a bank account over the internet. You can run your company over the internet. Uh, and uh, if your business doesn't involve any cash, all the tax reporting and that's that stuff actually happens automatically. So you basically can only focus on doing business. Might be interesting business case for some, so for some of the pe people in the world. Might be interesting for them to actually connect themselves with, 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 with Estonia. And actually, they don't connect themselves with Estonia; they connect themselves with the European Union, because as an East European Union member country, if you open up a company in Estonia, you open up the company in the European Union. Digital signature that, that actually our society uses a lot is available. So you actually can sign. You can actually participate of, of doing business every day, even if you live in New Zealand. So this works. And that's the point. I mean, like, uh, for Estonia, this is not a dream anymore. It's a reality. I mean, like, we are, we are starting to give out these non-resident ID cards in this year, in December. Uh, all the digital stuff we have tested and, and have worked for, the, for our own people already like 20 years. So let's see. Is it possible that even though we have only 1.3 million people living physically in Estonia, there will be at least 10 million people worldwide that actually are so-called e-Estonians? And this might be a new wave for, for small countries because people buying or citizens buying citizenship or, I mean, like, I go to Spain because of the sun. Up north, uh, the latitude where we live, it's the same latitude that Alaska is located. So, so it's quite cold there. So I go to Spain because of the sun. I buy this service from that country. I mean, like, this can be a solution for a small country who cannot provide a good weather, but could provide very good infrastructure for entrepreneur or just to be a cool. Yeah, if you connect all this with the morning session, I mean, all the virtual money and all that stuff, th this actually goes so ab absolutely crazy, so I'm stopping here. So, uh, yeah, 10 million Estonians by 2025. Governments moving cloud because they have to move to cloud because if you want to guarantee the digital continuity, they have to move to the cloud. So uh, it means if everybody's in the clouds, where are the borders? So thank you.